A hairbrush falls down. A crowd of people are cheering. A battle scene in a movie plays loudly on the TV. To us, this is customary. We witness these things throughout our lives and perceive it as normal. But for people with autism spectrum disorder, or ASD, this is far from typical. Have you ever wondered why autistic people often cover their ears or react badly to large crowds of people or loud noises in a public setting? For me, this is something I've been curious about from a young age. In third grade, I got the opportunity to join my elementary school's buddy program, where I got, to, where I got the chance to work with kids in my school who had autism and help them out with sports and other, and other physical activities. During my time in the buddy program, one thing that stood out to me and stuck with me after all these years was the fact that these kids were being bullied and made fun of for the way that they reacted to things that we found as simple, such as the bell ringing for us to change classes. It was so sad and disheartening to see the way they were mistreated for something that they obviously could not control. And I've always wondered why this happened. So I took it upon myself to look within the autistic community and do a little bit of research. I got most of my information from a research professor at Vanderbilt University. He himself is autistic and runs a multi-sensory lab designed to help people with autism cope with their senses. Now here I am talking about perception. And what better time to use my new knowledge to spread awareness and help other people understand what's really going on behind the way people with autism perceive things. So what is the answer to this common curiosity? Well, this can be found by taking a closer look at the brain, specifically the temporal binding window. Wait, what is the temporal binding window? And what does this have to do with perception and autism? Well, the temporal binding window is a key aspect and essentially the basis of multisensory perception, meaning how we as humans perceive things using our senses. It's an epoch of time in which our brains receive and integrate auditory and visual signals. The time elapsed between the reception of the auditory signal and visual signal is so small and the stimulus involved, called stimulus onset asynchronies, are so short that our brains integrate these two completely different senses, forming one cohesive event. Using a hairbrush as an example, our brains take the auditory signal of the sound the hairbrush makes when it hits the ground, and the visual of the hairbrush falling and hitting the ground to form one event, a hairbrush falling and hitting the ground. But for people with autism, their temporal binding windows are twice as long as ours, and maybe even longer. So in the instance of a hairbrush falling, they would first hear the noise of the hairbrush hitting the ground, and then comprehend that it was in fact the hairbrush hitting the ground, or vice versa, in that they see the hairbrush fall and hit the ground, but they don't hear that sudden burst of noise for a short period after. This would therefore startle them, causing them to react badly or cover their ears. This one sensory window can determine cognition, behavior, and most importantly, perception. Throughout my life, I've noticed that people have the preconceived notion that perception in our lives revolves more around bias or the way we view things in our lives. But for people with autism, there's so much more to it than that. There is a neurological and scientific aspect to perception that affects almost 49 million adults and children around the world that not many people are informed of. During my time in the buddy program, and just in classes in general, I noticed that the people around me, including many of my friends, used to ridicule and bully those in our class with autism because they reacted differently than us to our frequent fire drills, or the bell ringing, or whenever we clapped because someone did something good. There was one girl that I remember in particular. She was extremely nice, caring, and crazy smart, about three grade levels ahead of the rest of us in math. 
but no one wanted to focus on these amazing qualities she had and decided to shift the focus onto the fact that she had autism and reacted differently to things. They often tried to peer pressure me into making fun of them and join them in making up stories about her family and her living situation. But I decided to become her friend. But me becoming her friend and choosing not to make fun of her was nothing heroic. It was common decency. My newfound neuroscientific understanding of what was really going on in her brain helped me understand how hard it was for her to be different and how difficult it was to be mistreated for something that she couldn't control. It also taught me that something as simple as perception can have such an impact on the way people live their life, as well as how the people around them treat them. And perception in this case honestly goes both ways, because not only is their perception of the things going on around them different from ours, but our perception of who they are and the kind of person they are is not what it should be, because our perception of them is what brings us to judge them. Now, view yourself in a parallel situation. Imagine you're getting ready for school or work. You knock over a hairbrush. You see that the hairbrush has fallen, but you don't hear anything. Suddenly, there's a burst of noise. You're scared. You're startled. You have no idea what's going on. This is just a fraction of what it is like to live the life of a person with autism. And this is what that professor at Vanderbilt describes his daily life in the lab like. Whenever he drops a beaker or something as small and light as his glasses. Knowing this, I want, to, I want you to look within the autistic community to learn how to help them cope, rather than ridiculing them, making fun of them, or bullying them. Because this one sensory window of time can determine behavior and their perception of any event for the rest of their lives. This is the temporal binding window, or as I like to call it, the binding window of perception. Thank you. <laughs>